Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this lunch hour so long with Kimberbell. Just get my stuff ready here as we are about to go into part two of the Merry Christmas Y'all so long. If you are new to, to these videos and tutorials, um, today I am talking about this right here here it is merry christmas to y'all and y'all good night this is an instant download at kimberbell.com and look how cute that little santa is right there cowboy santa with his cuddle beard is just too stinking cute i cannot wait to make him today with you that's what we're doing today is part two um if you missed wednesday just a couple days ago it's never too late to go back and watch i actually showed you how to do the background quilting and piecing in the hoop on these half square triangle blocks and uh, that's what we did wednesday so if you want to go and take a look at that you can find all of these uh, at kimberbell.com well not kimberbell.com you can find the tutorials on our Facebook page, um, our Kimberbell Facebook page. You can also always find them over at um, our Kimberbell YouTube channel as well. All right, so check that out. They're always recorded. Now, some of the other techniques that you're gonna find in this uh, pillow will be, you know, how to do borders and how to um, do applique. Those kinds of techniques we do all the time at Kimberbell. So I have created a separate technique video on how to do those things. Um, and maybe someone here at Kimberbell who is moderating can let us know, uh, you know, uh, or give the audience a link to those videos. Hi, Jessica, how are you? All right, I've got Jessica here. I've got Andrew here. We are ready to talk. Merry Christmas, y'all. Today, I am, if you're looking at the download, I am on page 29. 29 is where we're gonna start. And as I mentioned uh, a couple days ago, you're gonna find that when you get to this set of instructions, here, let's go ahead and take a closer look over here, Andrew. <laughs> um, I am going to, we're gonna together work on Santa's face and hat. And there's two options labeled here right at the top. One is that we could start by doing our block by block quilting. That is an optional series of steps. I am actually gonna show you how to do that today because I want you to see how fun it is to do block by qu block quilting in the hoop, meaning that when you are done with embroidering these blocks, you are literally done. There's no extra, you know, um, having to do background quilting, you don't have to take it to a long armor, you don't have to stitch in the ditch, it's gonna be done all by you, all on your embroidery machine. So I am gonna start here, but if you weren't going to do the background quilting, and that's absolutely okay, um, then you're gonna start with hooping instructions, all right? So because I'm gonna start here, um, let's take a look. It's going to be an applique design, right? We're appliquing Santa. So it says, follow the instructions provi provided on page five for applique blocks. So we give you a series of steps you can follow um, on page five, or you can just watch, uh, watch along with me today and I'll show you how easy that is to do as well. I'm using my light mesh cutaway stabilizer. I've already put fusible backing onto my uh, fabrics and there's a third um, stabilizer that is, makes it very helpful for you to use, and that is the Kimberbell Wash Away Topping. As you can see here, that I've already uh, taken it out of its package, and so I've got my slap band there. We're going to be using that today on his beard. All right, now go a little bit further. We tell you the design, the background design that we use. You can certainly use any, you know, of Kimberbell's background quilting designs that are available, but we just so happen to have a super cute one that works great with this design, and it's uh, listed right there. Um, and you can find those background quilting designs as optional downloads at Kimberbell.com. The other thing, though, I want to note make you know and that's why it's also highlighted on your copy is that the alignment for this particular block when you're putting together the santa design with the background quilting design this is a little bit different than normal normally we would say okay just center both of them together and stitch but as you're going to notice here it says that these files 
aren't centered, you're actually going to want to shift your um, Santa design just a little bit and I'll show you how easy that is to do. All right. Okay, so with that, let's go ahead and get started. I have already um, taken my hoop and hooped my light mesh cutaway stabilizer. All right. And now let's go over to the machine here where I'm going to pull up. <clears throat> Let me go back here. Okay. I do have... I do have a, um, a tutorial out there on how to combine your background quilting designs with uh, the design itself. So in this case, it's the Santa face, right? So if you've never combined designs on a, a machine before um, together and you want to do that, be sure to watch for that tutorial. And I think Jessica can um, get, put a link in the chat and let us give you a direct link to what that tutorial is. But in it, I give you three distinct ways of being able to do that, either with software, doing it uh, one design at a time, or combining it actually on your machine. I'm today gonna show you how I combine it on the machine itself and how, remember I said it wasn't centered one on top of the other? We're gonna shift it just a little bit. I'll show you how that's done. All right, so because I wanna do background quilting, let's go ahead and find that file. It lists in your instructions uh, that you want the six by eight design. So here I have found it on my machine. Now, now every machine is gonna have, uh, you know, these thumbnails, but if yours, you know, does, I that's great. But, um, if it doesn't, this is something that you can look at just the, the title, uh, the name of the file too. I'm looking for the six by eight. That's what it is right there. Okay. Remember, you could do this even on your, um, in software beforehand as well. So as you can see, do you see the design file itself? We've got the cowboy hat and the cowboy boots. Isn't that so cute? Gosh, I love that design. I'm thinking that would be a darling design on a baby quilt too for a little cowboy or cowgirl. Hmm. Got some ideas going. All right. The next thing I'm going to do on this particular machine is hit set. Your machine may have a different name for it, but um, it is that we're just, we're wanting to add the applique on top. So in order to do that, I'm going to first hit set. Okay. So I've done that, but now I'm going to use a button called add. That means I'm just going to now find the cowboy Santa himself and add it on top of the background. So I'm going to click add. Your machine may call it something different, but it's the same idea. And I'm going to try to find my little Santa. Let's, here we go. I got Santa. He's ready to rock and roll. <laughs> and then set again. And now it looks really funny, doesn't it? We've got Santa going on. We've got background quilting going on. Um, but doing this where I have the design now on top means that my background quilting will be behind Santa, not on top of Santa, which is in this case, that's what I want to do. All right. But remember what I said earlier, where one design is not going to be centered on top of the other design. They actually, what we want you to do is actually move this Santa over and down just a tad so that, see how I can move this all over the place? You can do this in software or your particular ma machine may have you do it a different way. But I'm going to just shift it over just a tad because that way um, his, the side of his arm and his torso is going to be inside the seam as well and will match up with the other portion of the Santa a little bit later when we go to sew it all together. Here's what I'm where what I'm uh, referring to right here. Let's take a look. What I'm going to be doing today is just this portion. Let's take a closer look. Okay, right here. But when you shift that design just a little bit over more to the corner, you're going to now line it up perfectly with his arm. Can we get a closer close up of that, Andrew? Right here. 
Maybe. Am I there? Mm -mm. Or am I going down? No, I'm not seeing a close up oh. here. <laughs> there we go. Sorry. That's the ticket. Okay. This is where, see, there's like a seam. It won't even, you know, look like one um, when you put it all together and it's all stitched and quilted. But this is why I shifted Santa just a little bit more over here because then when we go to do his arm and the rest of his, his little tummy there, <laughs> it will all line up perfectly. All right. Okay. We've done that. Now let's hit embroidery and begin. So remember, I started first with the background quilting, then the Santa's gonna come on top. So the first part of the background quilting is that I'm going to stitch um, the placement line for um, my batting. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. And actually, I'm gonna stop that just a minute, moment because for whatever reason, you know what, I better, we're gonna make sure and start correctly right from the beginning. Hold on. I'll cut my thread there for a minute. It looks like my uh, stabilizer got a little wonky and I wanna stretch it nice and taut first. So let's hurry and do that first. All right. Make sure that's nice and taut. Okay. All right. There we go. Now it's nice. Let's go ahead and start our placement line for the batting. All right. There we go. Okay, so as you can see there, it's already stitched that placement line directly onto the stabilizer, and it's time to place a piece of our Kimberbell Project batting. That's this perfect batting loft. If you've used Kimberbell Project batting, you know how awesome this stuff is. Um, it almost serves like a stabilizer in itself, but it still has loft to it. It's still, it's just the right thickness where it's going to um, look like it's quilted and it's going to be still soft and supple um, like it should be in a quilt, right? So I'm gonna place this down and I just wanna make sure that my piece is larger than the outline. Now I've really oversized cut this, but um, we also have a chart in the download that will give you, you know, a size that will help you save some batting as well. This one just happens to be oversized and cut a little bit more. Do we have our Kimberbell scissors here? Oh, perfect. We were missing it. I think we were sewing the other day. <laughs> awesome. Well, I just need our duck bills, so we are good. Everyone gets, get out your duck bill scissors. That's my favorite for cutting around batting cutting around appliques, you name it. Judy asked, is the moving the Santa part, let's see, written in the instructions? And yes, Judy, it is. It's what I highlighted on page 29, where it shows, um, it talks about alignment. Uh, that is where it's saying uh, to move it and how far. Great question, Judy. All right. I think I'm going to go ahead and speed up my sh machine here too, and maybe it's on a slow mode. This is taking a, a minute, right? All right. While that's stitching out, do I have any other questions, Jessica? Um, on YouTube, Cindy Webb 
Wes asked, what size hoop are you using for the block? That's a great question. Um, I'm happy, because I'm doing background quilting, um, I know that the background quilting, it, it shows it on page 29, what the size is of that background quilting. And it is a size six by eight. However, because we are doing, um, we're doing what we call the block by block method. And that means that your stabilizer is, or your batting is not gonna be left in your seams. Um, you actually need an extra half inch embroidery field. So therefore, if it's a six by eight design like it showed, your embroidery field is actually six and a half by eight and a half inches. Which means if you have a six by 10 hoop, um, you're gonna have to bump it up to the next size, like a seven by 11 or an eight by 12, because you have to account for the embroidery field that actually gets stitched out. So in this case, I just, I happen to have a nine and a half by nine and a half inch hoop. So that's what I used, uh, but I could have certainly used a seven by 11. I could have used an eight by 12, a nine by 14 and such. Now, if you're thinking, oh, you know what? I don't have a size hoop big enough to do that. Maybe your hoop size goes to six by 10. Not a problem because you can still do Kimberbell's background quilting files even with a smaller hoop because of the beauty of, can anyone name it out there? You know what I'm about to say. The beauty of clear blue tiles. And I also have a video out there and I'm gonna ask Jessica to find that and put a link there in the comments. Um, I think it's called how to do background quilting even with a smaller hoop. I think that's what it's called. So if you're thinking this, this I can't do this, Oh, I'm happy to tell you, you can. You absolutely can with the use of clear blue tiles. And that video will show you how to do that. All right, great question. Okay, next step is I am going to do a placement line for my background fabric. It's gonna stitch about a quarter inch around all four sides of this, okay? Let's go ahead and do that. Stop it real quick. I forgot to check my, how quickly this uh, embroidery speed. Oh my goodness, no wonder it was so slow. I had it on the lowest <laughs> embroidery speed ever. Okay, we can change that real quick, folks. Get this show on the road. Okay. <laughs> right? Basically, you were doing this the whole time. This is going to go by a lot faster now. I don't. Ha! Ah, don't you love the hum of that machine now? <laughs> Little pedal to the metal, right? Thinking this is way too long, just for this stitch, right? All right. Ah, uh, okay. Now, this is what I love about our block by block method with background quilting, is because what I just did is going to allow it allow us to piece these blocks together at the very end uh, you know, to form the pillow and the batting that I put down earlier is not going to be inside our seams. Andrew, can we get a close-up of where what I'm talking about? <laughs> Andrew, it's as if we've worked together before. You just know what I'm about to ask. <laughs> All right. Do you see this right here? I already, the previous step, I, I trimmed my extra batting, right? So this step actually went a quarter of an inch outside of that batting so that again, when I go to piece these blocks together, you won't have extra batting in the seams. Gosh, I love the digitizers at Kimber Bell. Shout out to them. What you do next is you take your background fabric. I've already put our fusible backing on it and that's oversized, okay? Place it on there, and now I'm gonna take it back to the machine. It's going to do a tack down stitch all the way around, and then it will do our quilting. Let's go ahead and go to that part. 
And in the meantime, did we get an extra bob in here? Because I think we're pretty close to finishing that off. What other questions do we have? Questions, comments? What you got, Jessica? While she's looking at that, I'm going to, I am going to change my bobbin out a little bit. What can I help with? Okay, Lynn Gildmeyer asked. Hi, Lynn. I am getting wonkiness in my stabilizer after steaming it to shrink it. Is that normal? It is wavy and I can't get it to lay nice and flat in the hoop. Hmm. You know, I don't know. Um... I think you've got to make sure that you pull it nice and taut, of course. It should lie nice and flat in the hoop. Um, hmm, I'm, I'm kind of stumped. I don't, I don't think it should be. I mean, if you have a little bit of waviness, that's certainly not going to, you know, be a, a deal breaker or anything. But, um, yeah, it sh you should be able to get it pretty nice and taut. Make sure you're, you're tightening your hoop. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of stumped, to be honest. Okay. Any other questions? Just pull it nice and taut. Be gentle with it. We have we have one from Debbie. Okay. And she said, do you have a rule of thumb for what colors you do your background quilting for the projects? Oh my goodness, Debbie. That is a great question. And I'll tell you, it's going to be different for everyone. In fact, what I'm doing right now, Debbie, is I'm changing my thread because I'm about to do the background quilting on this. Um, in this case, this doesn't always happen, but in this case, the Santa kind of takes up, you know, the, the whole block. He's the star of the show, I guess, right? And so you're not going to see a lot of the background quilting on this particular block. But the kind, the ones, you know, I mean, I want to see what I can. And so I actually did change it to a darker thread so that I could see it. But certainly, um, my rule of thumb is usually, more often than not, I will match my, um, my thread or make it just a shade darker because I don't want the background, I want the background quilting to be a little more subtle. I don't want it to uh, be the star of the show, but I want it to blend in. But there are times, I will say, that I throw that rule out the door <laughs> because I'm just like, you know what? I gotta see it all. In fact, there we go. There's, I knew that bobbin was about to be finished. So let's go ahead. As I continue to answer that question, I'm going to change out the bobbin thread but it'll start back where we were. Here, just a minute. Okay. I don't know, what do you guys think um, out there? I'd love to hear um, and have you help Debbie answer that question as well. What are, what are your thoughts on background quilting threads? Are you someone that likes to blend uh, it in the background or would you rather um, have something that shows up nice and, and very, uh, a, a, a contrast color that you can see. What do you guys think? There's really no rule, hard and fast rule. It's, it really comes down to personal preference. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on, stop. Thread came out, all right. Something's going on with this. <laughs> wow, I don't know what happened here. <laughs> do you see this, Andrew? My heavens. I'm trying to see. We're like batting a thousand today. There, this thread is like all ski wampus here. All we right. can't have ski wampus thread. No ski wampus thread. We're gonna try this again. <laughs> what else? While I figure out what in the world is happening with this thread swell, look, I've got like three threads going on. <laughs> hmm. oh, I gotta love it. 
It looks like it got all snagged up and you've yeah. got... Yeah, there we go. There's you. Well, no. See? Look at what we got. Okay. Hmm. We're gonna, we'll, we'll figure this out. No problem. This is where the Kimberbell scissors come in handy. <laughs> <laughs> or, the, or the trash can. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, you know, the nice thing about doing a live sew along, my friends, is that we're all in this together. Okay, here we go. Let's try this one. Let's see what happens. We're doing and it for you. And, yeah, totally on purpose. I'm just making you feel better. <laughs> if it happens to you, right? Ay, ay, ay. All right, let's try this again. I'm going to line my bobbin. All right. Jessica, while I'm doing this, what other questions can I help with? Oh, now we're in business. Oh, can we throw in a comment? We will have a fully wound bobbin. Isn't there like a phrase, happiness is a full bobbin? Yeah, that's how I'm feeling about right now. All right. Any comments, questions? So there's one here from Mary Ann Heaton. Oh, hi, Mary Ann. And so that's the, this is kind of thing, I think this is the mood for everybody. She says, it depends on the block and the mm. mood, mm. whether I'm feeling bold or timid. <laughs> Either way, you can't go wrong. I'd like to see some of Mary Ann's quilts out there. I think, so. hey, you know what, Mary Ann, I, uh, she posts often on uh, the Kimber Bellas and Fellas Facebook page, Mary Ann, this is, this is your challenge. This is what we're asking you to do from Kim and Andrew. We want to see what you're doing with background quilting. You're bold or you're timid and you're the stuff that you're working on. That's awesome. Thanks. That's a, a great insight from, from her. Any other people say what they're thinking? Marianne also has a question as okay. well. She says, where do we find the filler blocks? I must be blind because I can't find them. Where do we find the filler blocks? Yes. Is that the filler blocks? Where's the filler blocks? Like the filler blocks on the pillow? Yeah. Are you are you talking about like the background quilting of the filler blocks? Give give us a little bit more information there. Um, Marianne, happy to help. Okay, guys, I'm gonna try this background quilting again with a full bobbin, and I think we'll be in business. All right. Did I just, oh my goodness, you guys, what did I just do? <laughs> you guys, I just started it from the beginning. Never let them see a sweat. We're just going to skip to the quilting part. <laughs> ah, yes. Here we go. Here we go, guys. Let's Never fear. <laughs> I, I got this. <laughs> We're in business. I keep saying that, but like everything that could go wrong right now, like it's going wrong. I don't know what's going on, but that's how it is. Life. <laughs> now it's stitching. Oh, yay. We got a full bobbin. We got the background quilting going on. <sighs> Here we go. Oh, Marianne says challenge accepted. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, Amy, she says, let me pull your comment up here, Amy. She says, I'm doing Cup of Cheer and my and all my background quilting is white. Yeah, I often do that too, um, Amy. Sometimes I like to just keep it subtle, keep it basically the same throughout. And even on like a darker block, if uh, using white is a great contrast, but then the block right next to it is white and you still use white, that works too. It just kind of looks like an all over quilting design. So certainly it really is up to you. Um, okay, the green filler blocks. One is under the Merry Christmas block. Yes. Oh, yeah. Um, the, the, it should be in the download, um, the cutting instructions for that filler block. And then it will also give you a um, a list of what background quilting sizes we used for those filler blocks. All right. It's stitching along nicely. Happy, happy, happy. There we go. Any other questions? While well, this is stitching out. How many of you guys have started on this? 
anyone started or are you just kind of thinking well i'll watch some videos first and then i'll get to it after my hundred other projects you have going on right how many are finished with it i'd love to hear that i know quite a few of you um have finished you've been posting your um, projects on camera bellas and bellas it's been really fun to see that okay it's almost done oh I'm glad I did this in a darker thread just for the fact that I want you to be able to see the overall quilting before I put Santa on top. It really is cute. Okay, here's another question. She says, how can I find the embroidery pattern for this pillow? Um, what I want you to do is you go to Kimberbell.com when you go to the very top of the page, um, there will uh, be a few choices to make and you can click on products. Then when you click on products, go down and find digital downloads. That is where you're going to find the embroidery files for Merry Christmas, y'all. Great question. Okay. If you want the background quilting designs, you go to Kimberbell.com, you go to products, and then you click on background quilting um, you can do a, a quilt by project, I, I believe it is, and then you can find all the files we used for Merry Christmas, y'all. Now, if you, um, there's many, many, many shops out there who also have what we call an affiliate link to, um, to direct you to those designs. And certainly, if you know of a shop that has that and would like to support them, and we would love for you to do that, they would too, um, click through their affiliate link first, then download those designs and they get credit for that. All right, Andrew, we gotta take a close look here. I'll put it this way, at how stinking cute this background quilting is. And this right here is making me feel like I've got to do a little baby quilt for a little cowboy or cowgirl with this background quilting alone. So you got to think beyond the pillow itself. Look how cute the little, uh, the sheriff stars and the cowboy boots and the cowboy hats are all over quilted. Oh my gosh. And with this design download, you not only get the block by block quilting method with it, you also get the clear blue tiles quilting with it because it's an all over design, which is pretty cool. All right, we're done with the background quilting. Do, 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 yay! But now it's time to put that cute applique Santa on top. So because I combined my designs at the beginning, um, the next step on my machine shows me that I'm ready to do the applique of um, Santa's shirt. So I'm gonna put that on there. I'm actually gonna keep my thread right now to be the dark brown, just so that you can see it better on the screen. Um, at this point, it, you're, it doesn't matter what color it is, um, but I am gonna keep it dark uh, so that you can see what I'm doing better, okay? If you're following along in the instructions, I am on the very top of page 30. new to applique what I just did was what we call a um, placement outline so I know where to place my fabric now this is gonna look really wonky because we got background quilting in brown we've got the outline of the shirt in brown so it's really hard to tell on this one but if you're looking at the pictures this is the area that I want to cover with my green fabric I've already um, fused Kimberbell's fusible backing on the back. This is going to help prevent puckering. Um, a lot of people will say, do you have to do that on appliques or do you just do it on background fabrics? It really is a personal choice for me. I just went ahead and did it on all of them, but certainly 
The most important place you could put it is on the back of your um, applique blocks, unless it specifically asks you to, to do it elsewhere, all right? Okay, so my point is I'm gonna just place this over here and I'm going to just tape it in a couple of places just to prevent it from shifting, okay? And now it's gonna do the next step of applique, which we call a tack down stitch. Diana says, I have my kit on the cutting table. Yay, with labels on the dry erase folders. Oh my gosh, Diana, you're on, you are on fire here. Ready to start cutting after today's video. Awesome, I'm so excited for you. It really, you know, once you get going, you're not gonna wanna stop, Diana. So, you know, plan on takeout tonight for dinner, right? <laughs> Plan on no sleep because you're gonna be up till two in the morning having so much fun making this. Um, have a great time, Diana. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, so now what has happened is that it has stitched a tack down line to tack this fabric down, but we've got to remove all of this extra stuff, right? Gosh, this is why I love machine embroidery applique. And I am using the Kimberbell Duckbill scissors. Um, that are just fantastic. They're a little bit thinner right here and on this duck bill to get a nice um, close-up cut. Um, it has nice big finger, fing finger holes um, for plenty of room for our fingers here. And you're gonna love that when you cut this design out with the, the duck bill towards the center of your applique, you're gonna get the best cleanest cut you ever did see. What I do is I start with uh, my right hand in cutting and I pull the rest of my fabric taut with my left hand as I cut along. The way, by doing it this way, the angle of the blade of this portion of the scissor is going to get really nice and up close to the stitches while the duck bill is protecting the rest of those stitches as well. gonna go along there clip 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 as you're going along curves you just might want to take a little bit smaller of cuts and we're almost done Whenever you go to cut, I would also recommend that you always place it on a flat surface. You know, I think oftentimes we get so excited to, to start cutting that maybe we try to cut it inside our laps, right? Have you ever done that where you've kind of just held onto the hoop and started cutting? If you do that, you might just pop this project out of the hoop. So it's always best to lay it on a flat surface. All right, if you're following along, I am on Step number seven at the top of page 30. I want to change out my thread to green. You can see here in the Kimberbell instructions uh, that we give you a suggested color. Of course, you could use whatever color you'd like. In this case, it was the green. So I'm going to stitch the decorative outline. Okay, well, I'm changing that thread color are there any questions I can help with? We do have a couple of questions here. One is from Linda Waterman. Okay. Hi, Linda. She wants to know where she can get a kit. That is a great question, Linda. Um, there are a lot of shops out there. I, unfortunately, I don't know all of them, but what we do do is we send out to all shops who want to participate in this. 
we send out a, a list of the fabrics that we use to, so that they can create kits and sell those. So my suggestion would be to, you know, ask your local quilt shop, of course, always. It would help if I threaded my needle. <laughs> oh, there we go. Um, ask your quilt shop and see if they've got kits for it. Um, if they don't, then my I, I'm certain that there are shops um, online that would be happy to send you a kit for this. Of course, that's if you want the exact same fabrics that we use. Um, kits are really nice because, you know, they can uh, put in things like uh, the extra leather or the velveteen for his hat or even the cuddle fabric and you don't have to buy like a, a whole, you know, amount of yardage for these things. You would just get what was in the kit. So if you can find a shop um, that sells them, um, I know they would be more than happy to send it to you um, no matter where you live. All right? Okay. Of course, in the instructions themselves, we also give you a cutting list, and you could uh, certainly go off of that as well. Okay. The next step is to stitch the, the face placement outline. I'm going to keep my thread green. It doesn't matter what color it is again at this time. In fact, let me show you why that is in the instructions. Andrew, let's get a close-up of this. And I'm going to go ahead and do that while I talk about it. Okay. But remember on the just previous step, I said, oh yeah, there's the little color block box and it's green, so that's why I changed it to green. But now we go on to step number eight, and the box just has these slashed lines through it. That means, and there's a there's a you know a a key at the beginning of these instructions to tell you what that means. But basically, it's just saying this whatever thread you use, it's not going to show in the final product. So really, use any thread that you need. Okay. So in this case, I use I just stuck with the green. Now, the next, this is the placement line for his face. So it's right, again, with this background quilting, it's hard to see here, but it's right there. Now I'm gonna take my face fabric. Again, I've also already uh, fused the our fusible backing on it, and I'm gonna place it on top, just making sure that whole area is covered. And stitch the tack down line for the face and go on from there. Now these kinds of things that I'm doing, I'm, I'm pulling the hoop on, I'm pulling it off, putting it on and off and on and off. Really, in reality, if I was sitting in my sewing room at home and doing this, most likely I wouldn't have to take it on and off the machine as many times as I'm showing here. The reason why I'm doing it, of course, is to for you to better be able to see what I'm doing. But like after that first placement line for the face, there's no reason I would have to then take it off, put it down, put the next fabric on. I would just like put my fabric on right then and there. So don't think you have to keep doing that between each step. All right. I'm now on page, or I'm on, I'm still on page 30, step number 11, and that is to just trim away this extra fabric. Okay. Hey, Kim. Yeah. We have a question from Sharon Bidding. Okay. Hi, Sharon. She said, does the design come with cut files so we can do cut ahead? Um, oh my goodness, I just lost it here. Let's see, she wants to know, does the design come with cut files so we can do cut ahead on electronic cutters? Yes, it does. Was it Cheryl you said? Sharon. Sharon. Sharon, I'm so glad you asked that. The answer is yes, it does. Let me, uh, and I'll tell you a little bit about that in a minute. First of all, I'm going to put this back on the machine where it's going to stitch the outline of Santa's hat. Okay, um, Sharon. Yes, it does. What she's asking is, does it cut with come with cut files or those are often referred to as SVG files? And the answer is yes, good news. Um, if it is an applique portion that is covered with a fill stitch, um, or yeah, a satin stitch, I mean, 
Um, yes. If it was a, like a raw edge applique, we don't include SVG files for raw edge applique only because, um, only because it's much easier with our tack and trim method to do that. But for all of these pieces, SVG files will be included, which means you can pre-cut them out on your electronic cutting machine. Great question. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna place this uh, velveteen right over the top of his hat mm -hmm. and stitch my next step. Okay, just gonna tape a few places to prevent it from shifting. And here we go. Okay, how are we doing folks? <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and follow along with step 15 where I'm just going to trim the extra fabric. Is anyone out there new to uh, applique, doing applique on your embroidery machine. Anyone have out there having some aha moments like, okay, that looks fun. <laughs> I wanna, can't wait to do applique. I think applique is what sold me on an embroidery machine so many years ago. The fact that I could just take a bunch of my scrap fabrics or my favorite fabrics and use them, it's just awesome. Now, one other tip. Velveteen is a type of material that, due to its nature, is gonna have some little fuzzies when you cut. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take, get, have a little bit of help here with my paper tape and just uh, lift some of those fuzzies, make it a little cleaner. There we go. Ah, that's looking good. All right, let's go ahead and go to step 16, which is the placement outline for the hat band. And that one is done with some black leather, which makes it really, really cute. Okay. Any other questions? Oh, you know what? We're ready to, to uh, lay down our black leather. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Kimberbell has an entire line of embroidery leathers, so soft and supple, and they stitch out, the stitches on them stitch out beautifully. Just love it. All right. Now it's gonna do my tack down line. like my thread came undone. Let's try that again. Hmm. Oh, got caught. So let's see what we can do here. Hold for just a moment while I get this figured out. There we go. All right. Just re-thread it for a minute. Whoop. All right, let's try that again. Okay, so that's stitching out. Oh, no it's not, let's try it again. <laughs> I went back a little too far, there we go.
Wait till you get to my favorite part, which is the beard. Oh my gosh. If you, I mean, you could certainly use white, you know, fabrics, any kind of white fabric, but we happen to use Cuddle, which is, um, a lot of people use Cuddle, they've used Minky, and it just is over the top cute with that. I'm excited to show you what that looks like. Okay, so the leather works just like you would a regular, you know, fabric piece. Just going to cut away the extra. Cuts away like butter. <laughs> it's really soft stuff. You're going to love it. Um, I mentioned that we have a whole line of colors. And uh, black is gorgeous here. But wow, I want you to check out all of our leather colors. Because there's some fun stuff you can do with it. All right, now let's go ahead and turn the page to page 31. We're going to stitch a, a little uh, kerchief knot right here. So a placement outline for that. And then we'll get to some really unique parts of this applique. With the kerchief itself, the beard, the fuzzy eyebrows. Cute stuff about to happen. Hey, Kim. Yeah. We have a new embroiderer alert. Oh, alert, alert, so, I love that. So, looks like Lolly's Craft Creations. Okay. So she says, I'll, I'll pull her up right here. Okay, she real says, quick, I'm gonna place this fabric down okay. and tape it and go for it, Andrew. What, what's happening with Lolly? Okay, so Lolly says, I've only been embroidering since June. Mm -hmm. So new to applique and all embroidery. Oh, welcome to the fun Lolly. <laughs> I think everyone out there, give Lolly a shout out that doing applique and embroidering in general is just such a pleasure to do. It's like one of those hobbies that just, well, all of our hobbies should make us happy, right? But man, there's something about embroidery that is just so satisfying to see how it all comes together and to pick and choose the fabrics you want. So fun. Okay, so just a little little kerchief there, piece of his kerchief. And just like the others, we're going to just snip, snip, snip around. Kim, we also have a question mm -hmm. um, from Walk by Faith. They asked, what embroidery needle are you using? That is a great question. Um, I am using, my guess, I didn't put this needle in, but my guess would be it's an 8012 because that's pretty much a good standard size for most, you know, um, embroidery projects is an 8012. Now, I will say that if I was going through like really thick areas, um, I might change it to like, um, like a 9014. If I was doing um, lace or like li small amounts of lettering, um, I might want a smaller needle, like a 7011 uh, or 7012, I think they call it. Um, yeah, but for just general work right now that I'm doing, 8012 will, will be just fine. All right. Okay, so the next step, let's see, we, where are we? We're on step 24. It says to stitch the decorative outline. So we're going to do that. And I'm also going to change the thread color because, of course, this is going to show, and I want it to be red. Okay. All right. Kim, we also have another new embroiderer. Yeah. Oh, it's my gosh, I love this. New embroiderers, welcome. I love it. Okay, keep going. <laughs> Lazy. <laughs> <laughs> Lady Fair started in June, too, so just like Lolly's Craft Creations. Awesome. Awesome. This is just, that's the best. That's the best. And you know what? You've come to the right place. You're going to have lots of support from um, us at Kimberbell and also all the Kimberbellas and fellas out there that love to embroider. They are happy to help you. Um, either on our Facebook page or our YouTube channel and um, reach out to us because we're all here to help you be very successful with your embroidery machine. This is just, it's quite a ride, this hobby. You're going to love it. Welcome. Okay, who else do we have? Okay, that was easy. Go ahead. 
we just have we don't have any new questions but we just have a lot of support for our new embroiders from the community see i told you 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 guys have come to the right place a whole lot of love going on a whole lot of support for sure and you know no question is a dumb question there ask away ask all the questions we've all been there done that as you can see today i had my own issues that came up and we're you know we just go yeah it's all good we can get through this right nothing nothing's ever perfect okay sniff that there we go okay are you ready for a little bit of fun here check this out got my little knot portion of his kerchief the little tie but now it's time to take the kerchief fabric itself that you did this um you would have done this in preparation to put this block together i t i've taken this square piece of fabric and it told me i needed to pr um uh, press the sides oh my gosh press it in half with the wrong sides together so that's what i did here um and then what you do is you take let's see let me read you the instruction so that I can then show you as I go. So um, you take that kerchief fabric with the fold, okay, this is the fold here, a half an inch above the placement line and the open corner pointing down. Okay, so the open corner pointing down. That's the open corner, right? This is up here, this is down here. Um, hand gather the center portion of the folded edge of the fabric to fit the placement line and tape in place. Okay, so the placement line, here we go. Let's take a look here. Just wanna make sure I'm in the exact right place, yes. Okay, so I'm gonna place this up here and I am going to fold it and kind of gather as I go to. And I need my tape to help me out here. All right, well, you're taping that, Kim. Mm -hmm. We Okay, so this one's not a newbie. She's on, it looks like she's on her one year uh, anniversary of embroidery. Okay. And so this is Margie. Okay. And Margie says, I just got my embroidery machine last June. Mm -hmm. It was my wedding anniversary gift from my husband. Oh, oh what a good husband. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She says, I've only made one Kimberbell mug rug and I love it. <laughs> so I got my cup of cheers still in the box looking forward to start this big project. And you know what they say about mug rugs? You know what? Once you start one, you want to do them all, right? <laughs> That's right. I love that. First of all, very nice wedding anniversary gift for sure. And then second of all, you're probably going, Kim, wait, you forgot to stitch the placement outline or placement line for the kerchief. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Just, I'm thinking, where's the placement outline? It should be here. Well, Kim, if you look at the instructions on page 31 number 25 you'll know i was supposed to stitch one more line first all right see what i mean we all just roll with this together <laughs> that would really help a sister out here <laughs> ah what other questions i i'm so excited that you got that for your anniversary gift so excited that you're making mug rugs that's a really really fun project to start with for beginners it's awesome this is making a lot more sense now i forgot the placement outline but never fear we have a it's multitasker a multitasker okay. yeah we have a multitasker here who's working on um the cup of cheer borders as he watches you stitch this pillow oh my gosh fantastic those cup of cheer oh borders are the cutest thing you'll ever see Oh, it's my friend Curtis. Okay. Hi, Curtis in Canada. Um, yeah, those borders are pretty stinking cute. Are you doing the house border there, Curtis, for Cup of Cheer? Guys, when I talked about the placement outline, this is what I meant. Do you see that red line there? That's going to help me figure out exactly where to place my folded edge. Is it about a half of an inch above? And I'm going to hand gather it just like so. I'm not going to think too much about how it's gathered. 
I'm not gonna worry if it's perfectly even. It's all gonna look good in the end. We just wanna make sure that it's, uh, you know, it's almost kind of like I'm pleating it, right? As you can see, I'm just kind of shifting it along so that it goes from one end of that placement line to the next. And this makes all the difference. <laughs> You know, following instructions makes all the difference. I just got ahead of myself there. I was just so excited, guys. <laughs> Curtis says, oh, you're doing the inner border first. Yeah, well, the inner border is pretty cute, too. It's got some cute little swirls on that. But the outer border, oh, my gosh, if you guys get a chance to look at the outer border on Cup of Cheer, it's a whole bunch of houses, and it looks so good. Okay. Now I can confidently say, I did this right. <laughs> Let's go to step 27, shall we? It says to place the wash away topping over the kerchief fabric. Okay, that's where I'm gonna get out my Kimberbell wash away topping. Okay, gotta love the slap bands. It tells me the Kimberbell wash away topping is this. And I want to place it over the kerchief area. All right. Go ahead and do that. How many of you have used wash away topper before? Do you love it? Do you know why you use it? It's good stuff. How were you, you use it for multiple reasons. You would use it, especially like if you were stitching designs on it, something like a, 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 um, a towel, something that has, um, that has uh, you know loft to it and you want your you don't want your stitches to sink into that towel and disappear well you would use a wash away topper so that your stitches stay up above um, that pile of the towel um, in this case though the reason why we're using it is because we don't want our machine to get stuck on any of these gathers while it starts stitching out the next steps. So we do wanna cover it. We're gonna lay it nice and smooth and taut over it. And then it's going to stitch the tack down line afterwards, okay? So let me quickly place that on there. And I would suggest getting this, you know, nice and tight. Don't just kinda, you know, so, so, so. You want this to lay down nice and tight across and uh, it'll all be removed later. You could also use, we have two different types of toppers. We have um, a, an iron away or a wash away. So you could use either. But today I am using the wash away. Okay. All right, a couple more places. I just don't want that needle to catch on any of those gathers. All right. Now I'm going to stitch the tack down line that's going to keep that all together. You know what? I just, I'm going to double check something that, yep, yeah, okay. I just want to make sure that I placed that about a half of an inch above the, the line. And I did. <laughs> I think, right? We'll see. Let's go ahead and stitch that tack down line. Slides nice and smooth over that topper. If you didn't have it, you're you're gonna run a, a very crazy risk there <laughs> of having your needle catch in one of those gathers, and then you're you've got problems, right? Then we go, oh no, my needle broke. All right, okay. So now that we've done that, we can remove our tape. And then we stitch our placement outline for the beard. I wouldn't worry about removing um, the extra topper right now. I'm just removing a little bit of the tape. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna stitch the placement outline, the beard placement outline. I'm just gonna go about right there. Actually, you know what? I might want to 
going to keep a little piece of tape, just a little one, right at the top. Okay. Jessica, any other questions? You know what? Hold, hold on just a minute. I that got a little caught. I should have probably just removed that. That's okay. Okay. Um, questions? We don't have a question here, but Linda Craig said. Love you, Kim. Just purchased a Solaris II and working on red, white, and bloom as my first project. Quilt your first project. Holy moly. Congratulations, first of all, Linda, for getting your Solaris II. That's cool. Beautiful machine, I know. Um, at Camberbell, we carry, we, well, not carry, but uh, we use all of the different brands of machines. So I am familiar with that one and love it. That's a good, good choice um, for sure. But yeah, we like to test on all machine brands. And um, you know, there are great, all of them are so fantastic in different ways. I'm really excited for you. And I'm excited that you're doing red, white, and bloom. That is a fun one. Have you, Linda, have you embroidered before? Or is this like your first run into machine embroidery with that new um, machine? I'd love to hear. Now, I'm on step 30. It says to remove the topping inside the beard placement only. Do not remove the topping that's below the placement line. So Kim, being the good student she is, is going to follow instructions. <laughs> See guys, even I sometimes don't yeah. follow instructions. Oh. And look what it does for me to not follow along. <laughs> the, uh, oh my gosh, the lesson learned here is always follow instruction. Okay, so we removed that up here. We kept it the same down here. All right, now we're going on to step 31 where we, this is my favorite. I told you guys I get to take, <laughs> the, look at this, fluff. Do you see the fluffs? Okay. I'm going to take the Minky fabric. Sometimes uh, there's different brands of it. There's Minky, there's Cuddle, there's all kinds. But it's what it is. It's the soft stuff. It's the stuff that makes you go, oh my gosh, I have to just like nuzzle my cheek right into this. It's the stuff that makes Santa's beard super over the top cute. So I am going to place my beard uh, fabric with the right side facing up, okay? Now, I was talking to one of my dear friends and co-workers at Kimberbell this morning. Her name's Carrie. And she was, um, she was one of the leads in testing this design. And I said, Carrie, if you could give this audience any kind of advice on working with Minky or working with Cuddle Fabric or the fluffy soft stuff, what would it be? And she said, <laughs> number one, always use the wash away topping, okay, on top. So I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll let them know, right? So I'm gonna cut away some wash away topping. And then she said also to, um, in fact, I just, I oversized cut this probably too much. That, that's okay. Um, it doesn't have to be this big. We actually give you cutting instructions in there. And uh, I just quickly cut a piece that I knew would cover that area. But she said, use um, the topping and tape it down really good and nice and tight, okay? She said that would be my number one tip. So we're all gonna follow Carrie <laughs> and, and do that, so. Let's go ahead and tape it here. And then I'm gonna spread it out over here and tape it here at the bottom. Okay, and then we'll stitch our tack down line here in just a moment. Okay. Oh, looks like we are out of paper tape. We use that a lot around here. Kim, right. while we're 
My guess is we have some more around here too. Then. Oh. Awesome. Thanks, Andrew. While we're waiting, Kim, Deborah yeah. Mundweiler has a background quilting question. Okay. She said she's trying to do the background for the half square triangles using a five by seven hoop, mm -hmm. but her machine says the design is too large. Do you have any mm -hmm. suggestions as to why? Um, okay, let me think about that. So you're, okay, maybe what I should do is let's get this on to the machine to do the tack down line and then I'll help answer that question. What's gonna happen is it's gonna stitch the tack down line, then we're gonna trim the minky close to it, but it says do not remove the topping from inside the beard. Okay, everyone out there, help Kim remember. <laughs> Don't remove the topping. Ah, oh, from inside the beard. All right, let's do that. I'm actually going to do this in red thread only so that you can see it better. Okay. Okay. So, remind me her name. Linda? No. Yes. Linda. Well. She tried using the five by seven. I'm surprised that didn't work because most five by sevens. Um, truly are a 5x7 embroidery field as well. So it really surprises me that that wouldn't have worked because I believe, if I remember right from Wednesday's tutorial, the background quilting design was a 2x6, which means, remember, we're, because we're doing block by block quilting, a 2x6 means that you need a 2.5 by 6.5 embroidery field. So technically, right, it should work. Um, so the reason it's not, I'm kind of baffled. What I would do, um, Linda, is find out what your actual embroidery field is. Thanks, Andrew. I apologize, Kim. This is Deborah. Oh, Deborah. Linda. Sorry about that. Um, Deborah, what I would do is go ahead and find out what embroidery field you have because most likely um oh lady lady fair is asking if she has a if it's a where where did that go i just saw it is it a standard five by seven or is it a magnetic oh and deborah says it's a standard it should work it really should work um try it one more time maybe yeah because standard five by seven hoops I can't think of one off the top of my head and anyone can correct me if I'm wrong on that, but this embroidery field is pretty darn close to that five by seven. Certainly enough that um, a two and a half by six and a half inch design like was on the, that was on those half square triangles should work. If you happen to have a larger hoop, then you know certainly you could bump that up, but a five by seven should work. So I'm kind of baffled. If anyone has any help they could give Deborah, uh, please please chime in. Okay, so I've got my tack down line. It says to trim the minky close to the stitch line, but you're gonna remind me, don't take the topping away from the center. Okay. Ooh, you know what we're gonna have right now? A whole lot of fluff. <laughs> that should be fun. But remember, I, I'm gonna use my paper tape to help uh, control that just a little bit. It's the nature of minky, but are you kidding me? You gotta do it. It's just too cute not to, right? <laughs> I, I'm glad I left this um, red thread for now. It's gonna be covered up with a stitch. <laughs> but I hope I don't see red through it. Oh well. It's for the purposes of television. <laughs> okay, as I'm cutting this, are there anything, is there anything else I can help answer? Or did anyone have any good suggestions for Deborah? Sharon Jones had a good suggestion. Okay. She said to make sure it's centered on the machine screen mm. and it will fit. So okay, right there, I should have thought of that. That is a great suggestion. Make sure it's centered. Great idea. Okay, see we got we got fluffies in the air, folks. But you know what? It's cute, so we're gonna you know we're gonna deal with it. <laughs> it's just so darling. I'm almost done. Thank you, um, 
Thank you for sharing that answer to help Deborah. All right, here we go. Woof! Fluffies, 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 flying all around. Okay. If you want to clean it up a little bit, just take some of that paper tape and roll it. Maybe you have a lint roller too. That would certainly be a good idea. That works too. Same concept, right? Lint roller, paper tape, you got it. Okay. So we trimmed where we left. Kim was a good student. I was a good girl. And I left my topping over there. And now I'm going to stitch the decorative outline. And now I'm also thinking, man, I probably shouldn't have done that thread of red. <laughs> because with a decorative outline, yeah, you run the risk of seeing that thread underneath. But you know what? Oh, well. It's for the benefit of the students. Exactly. It's for the benefit of the world. All right. And when I go to put my Santa together, I'll just think of all my students out there. <laughs> but I am going to change. I'm not going to have a red beard. I am going to change it to cream. And we'll see how much of it shows. And that will just tell you, oh yeah, I'm going to make sure and change this. The other thing is, I think that when this beard is done, all the fluffs are going to pretty much cover that outline anyway. So we might be okay. Let's find out together. All right. I think Santa's beard was originally red anyway, so... Oh, thank you, Andrew. Good to know. <laughs> I mean, us redheads have to stick together. <laughs> that is so true, Andrew. I feel a whole lot better. <laughs> This is also going off of the old claymation videos that, uh -huh. <laughs> stuff like with Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. I don't remember which movie yeah. it is, but there is one there. Like, <laughs> I think it, it's something about the early days of Santa Claus, and he has red hair. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Oh my gosh. Okay, so that is stitching the decorative outline. Turn the page. We are on page 32, folks. We're getting there together <laughs> oh I'm kind of sweating you know sweating with Santa here you guys are getting the hang of this though you know what you're doing mm, this is another thought um, from walk by face she says Deborah are you using the right design size for the 5x7 yeah maybe check that out um, maybe you pulled out the wrong file Possible. It's always possible. You never know. Lynn has a suggestion as yeah. why his beard might be red. Oh yeah? She said maybe Mrs. Claus made spaghetti for dinner. <laughs> yes, I'm going with that one, Lynn. <laughs> I like it. Spaghetti for dinner. Come on. A little marinara. No big deal. <laughs> Oh, that was great. Okay. You know, we should ask London why. Because she has a personal relationship with Santa, remember? London does? We should. Yeah. That is a question for my little friend Linda. London. <laughs> London. London. How many of you guys watched? Is it already two days ago? <laughs> What's New Wednesday this week? How many of you watched What's New Wednesday this week? and saw our cute little London, Andrew's daughter, came and, and she was my guest and she um, got to have a sew day with Santa himself and Mrs. Claus. And so she's got like the insider scoop on that. I think I may just have to ask her all about that. I <laughs> thought that's a great idea. Okay, folks, see, this is why you don't, Use red thread. <laughs> Can Deborah's problem <gasps> may be solved? So oh, yeah? she thought it was supposed to be a two by six, uh -huh. but it's supposed to be a five by seven. So that could oh, solve the problem there. Uh, okay, great, 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 great. Happy to see this. We all are. I should break out in song. We're all in this together, right? <laughs> We're all here to help each other. I love it. Okay. 
This is why you don't use red thread, folks, underneath, is because it does certainly show. At this point, though, I'm not giving up hope, though, my friends. I believe that once I take this topper off and fluff the beard, no red is going to be shown. No big deal. Okay. I'm, I'm just putting it out there. It's going to work. The next step, I'm on uh, step 36 at the top of page 32, and that's going to stitch a hat brim placement line where I will then take my next piece of velveteen and lay it down, tape it down, and do a tack down stitch on top of that. All right, I'm gonna do that all at the machine itself to show you it can be done. <laughs> all right, there we go. I got my next piece of red velveteen waiting in the wings to be placed down. And here we go. Nope, 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 nope. There we go. It's ready. Okay, okay now it's gonna do my tack down line. And then once I've done the tack down line, here. Go ahead. There we go. Once that tack down line is done, I can trim away the extra fabric. You know the drill, right? Trim away that extra fabric and then, oh my gosh, we're going to do the cutest mustache and eyebrows. Like the pictures of this this project really don't do it justice until you have done the project itself and seen what those fluffy eyebrows <laughs> look like. You're gonna die! It's so cute. Oh, the the fabric just sends it over the top. I can't wait to show you. All right, almost done. We've got some fuzzies, folks, but that is okay. Oh my gosh. I'm thinking I want to do a pillow just with this Santa on it, too, because it's really kind of fun. A fun take on Santa. Here we go. All right. Next step is we are going to stitch the mustache and the eyebrow placement line. This time, guys, Kim is going to lay down the law and keep it to white. <laughs> I'm not going to change it to thread because, yeah, I really want, I want to see white. But you know what? I, I, we'll be okay. We'll be okay. It's going to, I think it's all going to be covered up in the end. No big deal. And if it's not, I'm just going to remember that Lynn told me that he had spaghetti for dinner. So we're good. All right, that's going to stitch out that placement outline, and then we'll remove the topping. Any other questions while oh, that's stitching? Eyebrows just got placed. Now it's about ready to do the mustache. We have lots of com compliments coming through for London for the last <laughs> video. <laughs> of course, London 
is a star now. Don't you? I mean, well, she was always a star in our eyes, but now the world knows how sweet little London is, right? <laughs> Andrew, I said to him today, I said, Andrew, you must be very proud. And he said, yes, he's very proud. He's very proud of all of his kids. Tell, tell him how many kids you have. Uh, four, five, six, seven, something like that. There's four that I know of. <laughs> four. <laughs> Andrew! <laughs> No, I have four. Yes. Three girls and a boy. Yeah, and they are the cutest kids you ever did see. I said, how did that happen, Andrew? It, it, it's got to be your wife. It's, it's my wife, yeah. <laughs> they didn't take after me, luckily. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, my gosh. Okay, next up, he really does have the cutest kids, guys. And uh, London, just she's just, uh, you know, one example of that. Okay, we're going to remove the topping from inside his little mustache right here. Just that area. Nowhere else. Just going to poke a little hole in there. Remove the topping. And then we're going to place the fabric down for the rest of his, um, his eyebrows and his mustache. Okay, there we go. Okay, where's my fabric? Here we go. I'm gonna place this with the right side facing up, of course, and then I could tape it now, or I could just, you know what, I'm gonna just tape it after I place the next piece of wash away topping and tape that. Again, when I talked to Terry, or Carrie, she said, make sure that this lays nice and flat, nice and taut, and tape it, and you will be good to go. So I am listening to Carrie right now. Okay, while I'm taping that, who else has something to say out there? We have some comments coming through okay. um, from Debbie. This was a while ago. She says Santa has rosy red cheeks. <laughs> yes. They must be showing through. Yeah, there you go. You know, you can make it work. <laughs> I like it. We're almost done, guys. Can you believe it? <laughs> we got through this together. Okay, it just stitched out its uh, mustache tack down line, and now it's stitching out those cute little eyebrows. funny right now but trust the process here right <laughs> what is going on all right what I want to do I'm on step where am I step 45 but notice it says do not trim or do not remove the topping from inside the mustache or the eyebrows we're gonna keep that on here for just another minute but we're gonna trim all the way around the mustache and eyebrows. And while I do that, let's chat. Jessica, anything else? I know we've got people watching on YouTube, on Facebook. That's awesome. Yes, no new questions. Um, we got a lot of helpers trying to help Deborah sort out oh, the issue. That makes me so happy to hear. Yeah. It's awesome. Kay. So we're hoping we're hoping she gets it she mm -hmm. gets it done so she can finish up her project yes. here soon. Yes. But yeah. 
Cool. If anybody has any questions or comments, drop them in. Yeah. What is Kim having for dinner tonight? I don't know. <laughs> it's a Friday, Friday night. Maybe, maybe we'll order pizza. Doesn't that sound fun? Pizza night, maybe relax with the movie. Actually, you know what I'm going to be doing this weekend? is I, well, first of all, I have a birthday boy in my family. He's not my little boy anymore. He's turning 21, you guys. So we're gonna have, we're gonna have the family over for a family party this weekend, but I'm also gonna take some time to stitch out the um, Halloween little bench buddy. It, many of you pro have probably seen it on Facebook at Camber Bell. Um, it is the October 31st Digital Dealer Exclusives design. Cutest design for Halloween. Quick, easy. I've already gathered my fabrics. I can't wait to mix and match them. And I'm gonna do a few pillows. I've got, I've got a, you know, some ideas to do with those October 31st pillows. Not only for my own home, but I, you know, I thought I'd get some brownie points as being like, you know, a really awesome daughter-in-law <laughs> my mother-in-law out there is probably like woohoo I get an October 31st pillow yes and my mom gotta make one for my mom um maybe if I'm really nice I'll make one for my sister mm, I'll think about that no <laughs> a lot of you know my sister um I'll make her one too they're just quick and easy so that's my weekend birthday party and sewing up or embroidering up a bunch of October 31st pillows. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, check out um, Digital Dealer Exclusives at Kimberbell where a shop out there um, is offering that design. It's a really fun one. All right, where are we at? I have trimmed this away. I'm leaving in my topping and now I can do the decorative stitch around this whole area. All right, guys, we are so close and you know what's probably going to happen there's no doubt in my mind because we are so close to finishing i bet you anything my bobbin runs out again <laughs> because that's just how things happen around here <laughs> What are you guys doing this weekend? What are you working on? What are you embroidering? Anyone gonna take some, a little bit of me time to embroider some projects? I'd love to hear in the comments. Brenda says, super cute Santa. I, I absolutely agree with you there. So fun. Andrew, what are you? What's your family doing this weekend? Well, well, let me get in my seat. And I'll tell you. <laughs> my guess it has to do with maybe some baseball games, maybe dance recitals. Um. <laughs> He's in a busy stage in life oh, as a dad. Something. Oh. Okay, so we had a, had a power thing go out for a second. We lost our screen. But um, yeah, this, uh, so actually tonight, I have two of my girls, actually all three of my girls are doing what's called the like, mini drill team at the high school. So my daughter, my oldest daughter is on the drill team. Yes, so my at other the high two daughters, school. Yeah, my other two daughters are going to be doing the mini drill team with them. Oh, that sounds fun. So, and my son will not. <laughs> He's like, nah. Not so much for me, right? Yep. Oh, that's gonna be fun. So I bet your your younger girls just absolutely adore your drill team uh, daughter. The older, the what is she? A junior? Sophomore? Junior? Yeah, she's a junior. Yeah, right junior. Now. Yeah. I bet they adore her. Oh yeah, they have a lot of fun. That's awesome. Well, that sounds fun. So they're gonna be involved in that. 
I'm going to change my thread to red, guys, because we're going to now we're into the final stretch. We are stitching up the Santa hat. We have a lot of weekend plans coming through here. Oh, let's hear them. So Margie is working on her husband's 60th birthday party. What? That's fun. Margie, what are you guys going to do? Is it a surprise or does he know? I got to find out. That is a great question. She has lots of decoration stuff to sort out. Uh -huh. um, and Sharon Jones is going to make the October 31st pillow. Yeah. We'll, we'll do that together, Sharon, right? <laughs> Oh, you're going to eat. She says she picked up her leather for it. And finishing another quilt and a table runner. You are busy. I love it. But you know what? Life is too, life is too short to just focus on one project. <laughs> we got to do it all. <laughs> I love it, Sharon. Hey, when you get done with that, will you please post a picture um, of your 31st pillow? I'd love to see that. What else, uh, what else is going on out there? Helen will be making a hero mug rug for the nurse that helped her dad. Oh, that's awesome. I love that. You know, mug rugs, you guys know, I talk about this all the time. I love mug rugs. They're the perfect little gift to say thank you to people. Um, thank you, thinking of you, happy birthday, whatever it is. She's gonna be using the hero one. Uh, for the nurse that helped her dad. I love that, Helen. Thank you for sharing. Love it. And then this is great. Kelly Smith, um, uh -huh. her youngest grandchild, is getting dropped off um, to her at work this afternoon. And her papa plans to play with him so she can sew the January and Feb February digital dealer exclusive. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, first of all, I love that he's a papa. <laughs> P A W P A W. How cute is that? Does that? Are you like a Mima or a Mimi? Like, do you have a a fun little nickname as a grandma? I'd love to hear. Those are cute. Um, but then he, her little grandson, gets time with Papa, <laughs> so that she can do a digital, her embroidery of digital dealer exclusives. I mean, I can't think of anything better. Sounds awesome. It's wonderful. Okay. Oh, Margie says it's going to be a poker theme party. Okay, that sounds fun. Very cool. All right. Okay, you guys. see that Tracy's, she's driving from Pittsburgh to Houston? No. Uh, Tracy Cowan looks like. Tracy okay. Merritt Cowan. What's in Houston? What you doing in Houston? Yeah, I'd love to hear that. You know, are any of you going to Houston for Quilt Festival? That's coming up. Our, uh Boy Quilt Market will be in Houston at the end of October. And that's like more of a trade show. Um, and then Quilt Festival happens afterwards in Houston, same place, but that is more directed for the end consumer to, to buy stuff. Any of you going to that? I think that would be fun. Oma and Opa, German for grandmother and grandfather. Love it. Oh, Kelly says, I am Ma Ma with M A W M A W. That's fun. Sandy says, I prepped the fabric for this pillow and plan to work on it this weekend. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, I, I hope this has something to do with many of your weekend plans too, right? <laughs> That's awesome. Very cool. Okay, now it's stitching onto that black leather, and then we'll finish with the brim, and then we will fluff the brows. Well, I guess we still have to do the eyes, right? Yeah, Santa's gonna have some eyes, so we'll put some eyes in there. And then we'll, <laughs> then we'll fluff his brows. Oh my goodness, too fun, too fun. Where am I at? I am on, I'm stitching the Hat band outline. So then I'm on gonna do step 49 next. Um, I'm on page 32 and it will stitch the eyes. Then we'll finish off with the brim, the satin outline brim. And you can see how cute when it's all said and done and fluffed up. I bet you anything it's gonna cover that red thread we did earlier. Um, it's gonna be fun. All right. Ah, 
uh, anything else going on? This is fun to just kind of hang out here for a minute and see what's going on in your lives. Kim Margie says she lives in Houston and uh -huh. wants just a quick recap on the events you mentioned before. Oh, yeah. Okay, Margie. So in Houston at the George R. Brown Convention Center, um, downtown Houston probably, um, every year in the fall they do quilt market. I'm going to stitch the eyes right now. Quilt market. Um, this year I believe it's like October 29th, 30th, and 31st, something like that. And that is a trade show, which means that people like Kimberbell and other companies that sell our product to um, to shops out there. Um, it, it's a wholesale trade show, so only the only people that can come to that are if you have a, a shop, right, a quilt shop. Those eyes are done, so I'm going to quickly change out my thread to red, and then we're going to be done, guys. So, but after that is done, that's the trade show, and oh my gosh, there's that's fun for these shops because, and it's fun for people like us because we love to show off what is coming out in the next year at Kimberbell, um, or new fabric lines, new new designs, and let me tell you, we got a lot of new stuff happening at Kimberbell. Um, so we we show that and talk to shop owners and say we'd love for you to bring this into your store. People would love to buy it, kind of thing. So that is what would be called quilt market. But what you may be interested in is what they call quilt festival. And it happens a few days later. So if market ends the 31st of October, I believe quilt festival might be like November 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, some, somewhere in there. I believe you can find all the information at quilts.com. That's like the main page that will tell you about these dates and stuff. So if you go to Quilt Festival, um, the end consumer, such as yourself, would go and get to like see all, you know, these different companies' products. Um, most likely you're going to be finding quilt shops. Um, many quilt shops will be there. I know of um, a few. Uh, and that I'm very familiar with that will also be there. And um, they sell um, our product as well. So it's just a fun time. A lot of people come literally from all over the world to um, Quilt Festival. Yeah, it's, or yeah, it's Houston International Quilt Festival. Thanks, uh, Faith. Um, and you know, so if you are in that neck of the woods, boy, that would be a fun one to attend for sure. The nice thing is, is that, um, you know, we, the sad thing is, is because of COVID, um, the last few years have kind of been a hit and miss with trade shows and with end consumer shows, uh, just because of the nature of, you know, uh, the pandemic. But now um, things are starting to kind of get back to somewhat normal, right? And people are traveling again, attending these shows, and I think this October slash November time for the the quilt industry is going to be awesome because uh, we're excited to see what's coming out what's new and get working again oh kelly smith thank you for sharing that it she says festival is november 3rd through the 6th check it out for sure all right it looks like julie just had surgery she said that she's hoping to get an all clear from her surgeon to be able to start sewing again but it hasn't stopped her kimberbell addiction <laughs> oh thank you well first of all i'm glad to hear that things are getting better after your surgery whatever that was i'm sure uh, surgery is never a fun time for anyone no matter what's going on right so my best wishes to you for a, a quick recovery so that you can get back into what you love doing and that it sounds like it's machine embroidery. And thanks for still being addicted to Kimberbell. It's a good addiction, right? <laughs> oh. Barbara, she, she says, it's huge, meaning the quilt festival. She says, have been several times, beautiful quilts here. I'll pull up your comment here, Barbara. Um, she says, 
beautiful quilts, awesome vendors, usually have to make hotel reservations uh, far in advance. Yeah, uh, that's, a, that's a good piece of advice for sure, is uh, check out, you know, some hotel, so nearby hotels. Hey, wouldn't it be fun to like get a group of friends together and you just say, you know what, we're gonna go and do a, a weekend getaway to quilt festival and maybe get an Airbnb together and all bring our sewing machines and or our embroidery machines and just shop and embroider and shop and embroider. Sounds pretty sweet to me. <laughs> Sounds like something that would be right up my alley. I keep looking thinking, oh, it's almost done, it's almost done. And you know what? Guess what? <laughs> Guess what? Just anyone, just just throw it out there what you think just happened because you're probably right. It didn't stitch. <laughs> okay, we got this. I don't know what just happened and maybe it was the bobbin ran out. Let me look. Usually, yeah, it did. Yeah. I, I, I told you. Did I tell you? That would happen. <laughs> and it only happens because we are so close to being done, right? Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. No big deal. Here we go again. Here we go. <laughs> This is when I like to have a lot of pre, not, no, pre wound bobbins, uh, whether they're, you know, what bobbins that you've already wound a whole bunch yourself or whether you got them from a manufacturer already wound. But it's nice to just have them on hand, isn't it? So you can just pop one in. Happiness is a full bobbin, my friends. I think we can all agree. So Kelly Smith has a great little tip for going to Quilt Festival. Oh, tell us. So she says, if you want to shop, <laughs> don't oh. wear or carry oh, anything don't. you've... I know, because I thought the same thing. I'm like, if you want to shop, don't. don't. I'm like, I thought that's why you go there. <laughs> yeah. Don't wear or carry anything you've made or embellished, or you'll spend all your time explaining how to do it or letting folks photograph you. I mean... Oh, that's I mean, it's it, when you're living the that. when you're living the high life like Kelly, and everyone's photographing you all the time. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, that you know what? I didn't think of that, but I can see why she said that. <laughs> and you know what else I just noticed, my friends, is that because that bobbin ran out, it didn't finish stitching the black satin stitch from before. So, I'm just gonna swap it out. No big deal. I'm gonna back it up and we'll just keep chatting. We're all friends, hanging out. Hope you're having something good to eat right now for lunch, right? It's the, it's not the lunch hour so long, it's the lunch 10 hour so long. <laughs> we should order food. <laughs> <sighs> okay, let's do it, we got this, we got this, 30. Da, da, da. I'm going to show you how quick and easy it is to find exactly where I need to go. <laughs> and that was not what I wanted to do. Let's try this again. Um, da, 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 da. And we're off. Nope. Almost there, guys. Promise. Okay, we're gonna finish off the leather band, and then we will do the brim, and then we will fluff the brows. <laughs> See, it, Andrew, it's good that these things happen live, right? Because it's gonna happen in your own home too. I guarantee it. You're gonna. We're run teaching out of problem solving. Yeah, totally. No big deal. We're making mistakes so they don't have to. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. That should be. Right, Jessica? We should have a tagline <laughs> for, for the lunch hour so long. Mistakes made so you don't have to. There we go. Okay, no big deal, guys. Totally fine. I'm going to skip the eyes because I don't want red eye Santa. 
Wait, uh, no, no one wants a <laughs> eyes of red. And we're gonna go to the brim, like intended. I can't make this stuff up, guys. <laughs> this is reality television at its finest. <laughs> this is reality television. Yeah, Debbie says, at least Santa doesn't have red eyebrows. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's the small things for sure. <laughs> Barbara, she says, you know, they lie when they say design stitch out in 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Certainly not this one for sure, right? It's more like a best case scenario type thing. Like know? if everything, all the stars aligned and you had a never ending bobbin and you, you follow directions like how to outline. <laughs> <sighs> okay what else we got there Jessica is there anything else on Facebook or YouTube that I can help answer while we're just hanging out here Let's see. thanks for sticking with me guys <laughs> we haven't had a lot of questions coming in so far mm -hmm. um, any new ones but just looks like a lot of people can relate to what you're going through net right now <laughs> <laughs> yes I think we've all been there right and it's fine it's all good <laughs> no stress <laughs> reality <laughs> that's funny Kelly Smith she says it's reality okay now that's looking like it's supposed to hmm it's all gonna be worth it. You know, many of you who have followed Kimber Bell for a long time know that I have a saying that says, who cares how long cute takes? With me on that? Who cares how long cute takes? If it's gonna be cute, it might take a minute, but it's okay. We're Margie, not in no rush. <laughs> Kim, Margie Lunn wants to know when the new binder is going to be available. Ooh, Margie, that's a good question. Um, she is referring to a brand new binder. It's gorgeous, you guys. I can't wait to talk about it. Um, that is a Kimberbell branded binder. It's got beautiful florals and polka dots on it. I think it's like three or three and a half inches wide. Um, and it is coming out uh, in September. I know it is September. Date-wise... Do I dare ask Andrew Bell? Oh, you guys will know that inside joke if you watched What's New Wednesday this last week. Um, but it is coming out in September. So you're going to find uh, more information about it coming from me um, probably next What's New Wednesday, I believe. Either in one or two weeks. Um, it's on the schedule. Um, where I'll be talking about the brand new binder. So it's, it's kind of fun. If you have always been thinking, gosh, I'd really like a great way to sort all of my, you know, Kimberbell patterns and stuff, um, this binder I think you're going to like. Because it's not only the binder, but it's also the, um, you get these colored tabs and you get like st sticker sheets and, and stuff to help organize all your stuff. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, Kelly Smith, new binder? Is there an old binder? No, it's just... A binder that's new 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 product yeah yeah it's really cute I have one in my office right now um, that I've been using and it just makes you smile I, I cannot wait to share more about that Debbie says Andrew Bella doesn't know if you guys are wondering about the Andrew Bella reference you really got to watch this last what's new Wednesday it was pretty funny um, we had a little banter going on about Kimber Bell, Andrew Bell, you know, that kind of thing. Plus you get to meet London, which you, you gotta, you gotta meet little London. Very fun. Um, so yeah, that's coming out. We also have a brand new paper tape dispenser. I know a lot of you guys have gotten this one in the past. Um, 
This was one that came out, oh, I don't know, maybe a year or so ago. We also had this one that came out, um, a Kimber Bell one for our paper tape. And this was actually one that was um, uh, sent out in the Bella box. Oh my gosh, you guys, we have a new Bella box coming out here very soon too. In about another month, I think, we're gonna be talking all things about this brand new Bella box about to come out. And uh, anyway, this is from an older Bella box. This is from maybe like a year ago. And then we have another new tape dispenser that is a new color, new design. You're gonna want it because you gotta have them all. Let me tell you, they're awesome. This thing is heavy, heavy and hefty and it's not going anywhere. It's nice and weighted. And then it's got a great place to cut. It's it's just perfect. It's it's it was especially made. A mold was especially made for these tape dispensers to hold Kimber Bell's size of paper tape. So anyway, new binder, new paper tape dispenser, new. Blah, 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 blah. I can't tell you what else is coming out, guys. Hey, that Kim. would not be fair, right? Hey, Kim, Liz asked a question, and I think I can take a stab at it. Okay. So, I mean, it's a little bit of a technical question for computers and things like that. Okay. And I'm kind of a nerd like that. So, I'm going to pull it up. And that is, Please. Liz says... Real quick, just in case anyone's wondering what I'm doing. Remember how the bobbin ran out when I was doing the leather part of the hat? And then I said this, the eyes stitched afterwards. Well, the eyes never stitched. So I'm looking at it now going, well, that is a cute Santa, but there's no eyes. Oh, you guys, can we get through this project? I don't know. <laughs> Let me stitch his eyes real quick. And you know what? If it came down to it, I could have used buttons for eyes, right? So I'm going to stitch that while Andrew answers some very important technical issues, okay. right? Yep, well this comes from Liz Bowen Taylor. I think okay. it's Bowen or Bowen, I'm not sure. Okay. But she says, on USB sticks, why do some not work when transferring downloaded designs from the PC to the USB drive? And that's a really good question mm -hmm. because that's, I mean, different piece, or different uh, USB sticks can sometimes be formatted, meaning like how they, how they write uh, their information onto it a certain way, depending on what your machine is. So um, it is possible that maybe your USB drive might be formatted for a different embroidery machine. Mm. And so sometimes the embroidery machines have a hard time doing that. So a way to do that is you could format it in your computer and then most, you, when I say format, like you, you'll take a blank USB stick and put it into your computer and then you can right click on it and you can, there's a little thing on it that says format. And it's gonna say, okay, how do you wanna format? And it, it sounds like kind of a weird format, but it's called FAT32. Really? Just think of it like a fat quarter, okay? okay. Like FAT32. And that's actually a, um, a great format. And then you can put all your files onto it. And um, hopefully if hopefully that'll solve your problem, you'll be able to put it onto, um, onto almost any machine at that point. So Andrew. That is so s smart. I, I do have the occasional gem. <laughs> that I come, that question that I can answer. Thank you, actually. No, really, thank you for, sh for sharing that information. That was very helpful, for sure. I hope it was helpful to you guys. You guys, remember how I said how long, who cares how long Q takes? Take a look. Let's get a close-up of this. Oh my gosh, I'm loving this. And I haven't even fluffed the eyebrows yet. But check this out. I've popped it out of the hoop. We got through it together. And now I'm going to re remember, see there's that red line. But I think what's gonna happen is once I tear off this um, wash away topping, what I wanna do, even though it's wash away, I do like to like, Pull as much of it off as I can first, and then you can just like d dampen a little sponge with water or just use a spray bottle. And any leftover topping you can certainly um, remove with water. Um, if you used a, an iron away one, you could just use a little bit of steam um, to iron away the rest. Here we go. Oh my gosh. Okay, look what's happening. Look what's this makes me so happy. 
And now, oh my gosh, okay. So that's cute, but wait till you see the fluffy eyebrows. I'm gonna get that going here. Okay, just poking a hole there in my, in my topping to get it started. Can we have a quick question? Yes. So Kelly Smith wants to know what sizes do you get in the tear tray event other than what's shown? That is a good question. Um, boy, I don't remember. I don't remember. But um, my guess is that it is exactly the sizes that were shown um, because it, that is what fits on the tear tray. Like if it went into any other sizes, it wouldn't fit on the tear tray. So um, I believe that's what it is. If there's any extra sizes, um, it will be listed probably on um, the, the product page. That's a great question. Because oftentimes we do put additional sizes of things, but since this is so specific to that event, my guess is that it's just the size that was shown. Okay, but I could be wrong. So check out an event page, um, either at Kimberbell.com or at you know shops that are hosting this. And oftentimes it'll say right there in the description if there's any extras. Okay, who cares how long Q takes? Check this out. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so happy, 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 happy. I could, oh, this makes me happy. Okay, you can see why I liked to do the background quilting and the little darker thread, only because the areas that it does peek out of, I wanted to see it, and that is really, really cute. Look at the little sheriff star down there. Oh. And the one up there and then we've got Santa himself where we would square this up do the rest of the designs there we go piece it all together and before you know it you've got the cutest Santa pillow awesome anyone making this into something else maybe I should ask that question has anyone thought about like, huh, you know, I like those designs, but I'm thinking I'd like to try it with whatever it may be. I think there's some fun possibilities here. Even these fun cowboy boots right here, there are stockings. Um, that would be cute to just do a continuous line of them, like maybe 10 or 12 of them. That would be really cute as like a little runner. Maybe you could make this, ooh, I'm just kind of thinking now, what if you put like um, felt behind that and made a little pocket? Then you could have a string of little cowboy boots with pockets that you could put little treats or goodies in. That would be fun. Oh, Margie's going to do a garden flag. Love that idea. Yeah. Lynn asked, how does the rope get put on there? Yeah. Isn't that a fun little um, technique or you know addition to this what our team did um, you could do it a couple ways but our team as I'm looking at this they just uh, placed it on there and then just tacked did little tack stitches like every looks like maybe about every three or four inches maybe two every two inches it looks like just did a little stitch with probably a needle and thread and stitched all around that to get it to attach. But you could certainly use like, let's be honest, I would use fabric glue. <laughs> Gotta love the fabric glue. That's what I would use to get that down there. But a little stitch, needle and thread, you're good. All right, guys. Ooh, Kelly says, I think Santa, I'm gonna bring that up. She says, I think Santa would be adorable over a card holder and maybe the boots as pockets to hold the cards. That's a fun idea. I really like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love it. Okay, you guys, it's, it, we have like worn out um, all of your time today. Like, <laughs> no, I'm just, I hope, I hope you felt it was worth spending the last, you know, couple of hours with me. It was all, it was all good. I sure, I enjoyed it. I'll, I'll just say, I enjoyed being here with you. And I hope that um, you learned something new, right? We can also learn through the crazies, craziness of, you know, things that just happen. 
just because. So I hope it was fun for you. Sure, it really was for me. And I like learning more about what you guys are doing. What's going on in your lives? What are you stitching? What are you, you know, what parties are you planning? Um, what's, what are you doing this weekend? Tell, I, we love it. We love it all. So thanks for joining me today, guys. If you missed uh, the first part of this so long, it was last Wednesday, but it, all of these things are always saved on our YouTube channel or our Facebook page. When you go over to YouTube, that is the best place to find everything in one place. It's all categorized so that it's easy to find what you're looking for. Um, please subscribe to Kimber, the Kimberbell's channel over there. You won't regret it. You will always know when something new is uh, put on there. Um, so please like it and subscribe to it. We would sure appreciate that. Um, and there, of course, like I said, you'll, you'll be able to find every, all the tutorials we've done in the past um, there as well. The easiest, best place to find it all in one place. Facebook, it is on there too, but it's a little tougher to find just because, you know, there's so many things going on between the videos. So check it out over at YouTube as well. Um, okay, anything else? Andrew, uh, anything I'm missing? Jessica, we do have before a few, we say goodbye? Yeah, we do have a few questions here. Okay. Um, Linda Waterman's asking what fabric glue you use. Um, it's just a, like a like a tacky glue kind of um there's a lot i think there's one called maybe fabric fusion i'm just trying to think off the top of my head here but if you just go to a quilt store and ask for fabric glue um they, they will have something for sure yeah and the nice thing about fabric glue is that it's going to bond the fabrics together you could use hot glue but sometimes i find that hot glue um it just doesn't have the bonding effect to fabric as you would have if you use like a true fabric glue all right you don't um i i would not necessarily do a glue stick i think like a you know a fabric glue in a tube works a little bit better and if anyone else has ideas um for a brand of fabric glue out there please chime in lynn asks is there a link for the videos on youtube lynn uh, andrew Yes. Is there something you can help us out with on that? We can put those up there. Yeah. Okay, we'll make sure and put those links on. Uh, while you're there, I know I've referred to this a few times, but I just, you know, I want to reiterate that if you go to our YouTube channel and you are looking for just like technique-based videos, um, we have a series that we just finished up last week, week before, for Cup of Cheer. But... Oh yeah, fabric tech, that is a good one. Um, cup of cheer. And what we did with cup of cheer is we actually broke it down into techniques instead of necessarily blocks. So I, you know, I thought if anyone out there, whether they're doing cup of cheer or not doing cup of cheer, and you wanted to learn how to applique, if you go to the tutorial on how to applique, there I will show you how to do it, but I used a block from cup of cheer as my example okay or you could go and go you know what I would really like to learn how to do fringe on my embroidery machine so you would go to these lists of tutorials uh, for cup of cheer and it would say how to fringe on for how to fringe with your embroidery machine and there you would see that but I happen to use a um, a block the snowman block from cup of cheer so they're really broken down into into techniques that are like little short bits of information, like maybe five minutes long. We try to keep it short, concise. We know your time is, you know, precious. And maybe you just want to know that little technique. But um, you can use that technique on Cup of Cheer, Home is Where the Hunt is, uh, candy corn quilt shop, you name it. You can name it. You can use that technique for any kind of Kimberbell design. Okay. So where in particular would be Andrew, where could we, where could they see the list of those technique I'm videos? Link right now for them. Sweet. It's going on Facebook and YouTube. Okay. Andrew just posted a link. Does this go to that specific list? It, go, it goes to the cup of cheer. Perfect. Okay, so it goes to the Cup of Cheer list of tutorials. Go ahead and click on that, and there you're going to see a whole long list of different technique-based videos. Using Cup of Cheer as an example, of course, 
but really um, it's not um, it's not just limited to cup of cheer okay all right well i think that's all everyone that's all folks is that what i should say that's all folks thanks for hanging out with me today it was sure a fun time and um i will see you next week let's see the next time we're together would probably be next wednesday for what's new wednesday that's always at 10 a.m mountain daylight time yeah, I come to you live from a sewing studio at home and uh, share with you what's new at Kimberbell. All right. Have a great day, everyone, and a great weekend. Bye-bye.